This program is brought to you in part by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. Coming up next on Changing Your World. God's already working in somebody's future this morning. He's got your future all worked out. He's got your future finished before the foundations of the world. He's already gone and drilled out, carved out the path, done all the things that need to be done. He's gone ahead of us. He's already in our future. That's why we can't stay stuck in the past, talking about what they did and what I did and how I messed up and I feel bad and I'm guilty. And man, just let that stuff go and trust God. Join Creflo and Taffy Dollar for a three-day life-changing celebration, July 11th through 13th at World Changers Church International for our annual Grace Life Conference. We're kicking off this year's conference with inspirational singer and songwriter, Doe Jones. General session times are 10 a.m. and 7 p.m. Ministers and leaders don't miss the 5 p.m. just for you. Text Grace Life, one word, to 51555 and register today. This is your world, so let's vow to make it a better place. Let every heart that needs to know, you love is here to stay. Ooh, it's time we live a new life. Let us love shine bright in you. We sing by His grace, so we embrace your love today. I'm going to continue on some things that I believe the Lord wants me to share with you, and I just pray and trust that it'll be something that will really resonate and just put you in a place where you can begin to walk in victory like never before. We've been hearing a lot about how God's ways are different from our ways, and of course we know that. We know that we're learning how to follow him so that we can begin to walk in his ways. And so for a few weeks now, Prevalo has been talking about his thoughts are not our thoughts and his ways are not our ways. And so I want to continue along the line this morning. And I want to deal with something that um, I believe will really be a blessing to your life. I want to look at some of the family systems in the Bible and begin to look at how things have gotten us to where we are to a point where we must begin to examine this area of our life so that we can begin to see more of his ways and his thoughts and his plans being manifested. So we're going to look at some situations uh, as it relates to some things that I believe are very, very common in our life in this day and time. So I guess if we were to begin, the Bible talks about how many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord, what, delivers him out of them all. There's a scripture that talks about how, you know, we're going to endure and encounter persecution. Amen? And there are going to be obstacles that are going to be against us in our lives and in our families, particularly in the area of drama. And that's what I want to spend a little, talk, a little bit talking about this morning, because I don't know about you, but many of us are exhausted by the never-ending drama in our lives and in the lives of other people. Never ending drama. We're going to look at some examples of that. We don't really have to look far. <laughs> because I don't stand here today as one who is drama free, never known anything about drama, never known drama. I'm not talking from a textbook about drama. I know drama. <laughs> and it will confirm and affirm some things today because we'll see that 
families in the Bible went through the same thing. And so many of us are exhausted by the never-ending drama in life and in the lives of others. While some of us try to escape drama, some people dive head first. <laughs> drama is part of life. Yet what about continual drama? Could this be a sign that drama keeps finding us? Or I want to ask you this morning, world changers, or are you finding it? <laughs> you stay real still, won't nobody know we're talking about you <laughs> and your family. So there are two kinds of drama. The drama, number one, that life brings. I mean, you know, life will bring drama. It will. COVID brought what? A lot of drama. People together more than what they ever imagined brought drama. Death, like none other. People transitioning, loss, loss of jobs, loss of family, loss of people. So drama can come from what life brings. The second kind of drama is a drama that we create. Through our response to life, through how we react, through our reaction to things that occur in our life. Uh, you know, God allows things in our lives, and in many instances, it's how we respond to what he allows in our lives that has a lot to do with maybe our upbringing, maybe our belief, maybe what we value, our expectations. These are things that can, in many instances, create a response that comes out of nowhere. Drama. Creflo is very punctual. Sometimes when I'm running late, we can have a little drama on the way to church. <laughs> but you know what? Because he believes on being on time. That's important. That's valuable. And so sometimes when we have expectations and people may not know what our expectations are, we can in many instances respond in a way that can bring about drama. So we want to sort out the drama this morning, the drama that life brings. Because not all drama is because we bring it on ourselves. So our upbringing, our personality, baggage from past wounds can trigger dramatic reactions to different degrees. How many of you know we can be near someone who erupts? <laughs> Y'all real quiet. I said, I ain't going to erupt today. We can be near someone who erupts or the target of slander or the victim of passive aggressiveness a person who wants to take out their frustrations on someone else. Sometimes we are blindsided with disappointment or events that has us scrambling to keep sanity. Some may say this morning, Pastor Taffy, I don't do drama. Is drama something that we do? Like you do dishes, <laughs> like we do laundry. But I understand definitively what that means. I don't do life because life, in many instances, brings drama. What they mean is I'm tired of the drama. I don't put up with the drama. I'm going to avoid 
the discomfort and no longer going to be around people who bring it. So when we say, I don't do drama, does that mean take this because I don't receive it? So we have to ask ourselves, as much as we would like to shut down the chaos, the confusion of our lives and say we don't do it or I'm done with it, somehow it has a way of creeping into our lives. Drama, as you and I both know, it has a way of coming unexpectedly out of nowhere, suddenly, without any notice, without any uh, regard. It just happens. You know why? Because it's part of life. Drama happens everywhere because life is happening where? Everywhere. Seasons come, seasons go, and it happens because what? Our emotions are real. Amen. Amen. Petty, there's petty drama, and then there's painful drama. Drama happens when unexpected circumstances hit and we are unprepared to handle them. Some of you came this morning and left drama at home. But in Jesus' name, that drama will not be waiting for you. When you leave here today, God will have dealt with that. We declare it in Jesus' name. So drama happens when we come up against family members or people with different personalities who carry with them their own set of emotional baggage, expectations, values, and beliefs. And like I said earlier, just being around people sometimes can elicit drama. Now let's look at this in Luke chapter 10, verse 38. Luke 10, verse 38. Let's look at some pain, some petty drama first. Petty. Petty. I can, I can relate. I can relate to this. You know, I can, you know, we can be petty Betty sometimes, you know. It's, it's um, an illustration that we have talked about in many times past, and we're going to look at it today because we're talking about families and how God's going to bring it all together in the end. Amen? Amen. All right. Verse 38. As they entered their travel, reading from the uh, message translation, Jesus entered a village. A woman by the name of Martha welcomed him and made him feel quite at home. She had a sister, Mary, who sat before the master, hanging on every word. Uh, hanging on every word he said. But Martha was pulled away by all she had to do in the kitchen. So we see Mary was what? Hanging on every word. Uh, Martha, on the other hand, was pulled away by all that she had to do in the kitchen. We don't know if the kitchen was dirty. Uh, maybe she showed up and there were dishes all in the sink. Maybe this was all Martha's idea. This was all Mary's idea. Martha wasn't doing what needed to be done. But the scripture says that Martha was pulled away by all she had to do in the kitchen. Later, she stepped in. This is Martha. Interrupting them, Master, don't you care that my sister has abandoned the kitchen to me? Tell her to lend me a hand. Somebody say drama. <laughs> Petty drama, but nevertheless, we got a little drama brewing. A little drama because Mary was... <laughs> Little 
drum in the sound system this morning. But Martha was, you know, in the kitchen and she was upset with Mary because Mary was hanging on Jesus' work. It's like, Mary, you know what's going on in this kitchen and you know that Jesus can wait or you can hang on the word later, but I need for you to recognize what's going on. And so he, uh, she feels the need to interrupt, and then Jesus says here in verse 40, Martha, dear Martha, you're fussing far too much. Fussing far too much. I mean, you know, that's drama. Far too much. And getting yourself worked up over what? Nothing. One thing only is essential, and Mary has chosen. It's the main course, and it won't be taken from her. So I want us to understand that, you know, there can be situations such as this that are small, but nevertheless, it is a part of life, and how we respond makes all the difference in the world. Mary was minding her business, listening to Jesus, and then here comes Martha. Let's look at a painful situation in the Bible of a family over in Genesis chapter 45. This may be a story that many of you are familiar with because it is something that we often have heard about Joseph and how, you know, the things that he went through being sold in slavery by his brothers, his family, and it was a very hurtful thing. We can only begin to imagine the things that Joseph was feeling, and the Bible talks about that in chapter 42 through verse, uh, all the verses there into chapter 50. And so we understand some things because that is a lot. I can only begin to fathom the things that were taking place. But there's such a thing as painful drama. Joseph went through rejection. Uh, his brothers sold him into slavery and they staged his death. Then they suddenly reappear into his life. Look at chapter 40 five of the book of Genesis, and let's look at how drama can be painful stuff. And we'll just choose these two, just there are others I won't look at for the sake of time, but they are there in the Bible, and I encourage you to even look at it and be able to relate with some of the ways in which they dealt with the situations in their families and in their lives. So this was Joseph who at that time had already been developed and had grown on, uh, no longer a slave, but uh, God began to put him in a position of authority. So again, I'm reading from the um, message translation, verse 1. It says, Joseph couldn't hold himself in any longer, keeping a front before all the attendants. He cried out, leave, clear out, everyone leave. So there was no one with Joseph when he identified himself to his brothers. This is him seeing his brothers for the very first time after he had been sold and things had transpired over years and times. He had told his attendants to leave. And then we see here what Joseph's respond is. He says, it says here in verse 2, but his sobbing was so violent that the Egyptians couldn't help but hear him. 
the news was soon reported to Pharaoh's place that Joseph's brothers were here. And Joseph identified himself to his brothers. He had not seen his brothers. This was years that had passed, and all of a sudden, they feel the need to go to a place to have their needs met, and Joseph was there in charge. And so Joseph, he tells everyone who's there at the time to give me a moment because he wanted to identify himself to his brothers. And then it says, Joseph spoke to his brothers. I am Joseph. Is my father really still alive? But his brothers couldn't say a word. They were speechless. They couldn't believe what they were hearing and saying. Come closer to me, Joseph said to his brothers. They came closer. I am Joseph, your brother, whom you sold into Egypt. Get your seatbelt on. Tighten it up real tight, I'm telling you. Look at what Joseph says. But don't feel badly. Don't blame yourselves for selling me. God was behind it. God was behind it. And this morning, I want you to think about the fact, the drama that you might be going through or that you're seeing other people go through, God might be behind that thing. Amen. Debbie, I th <laughs> Debbie, I thought about all the women in human trafficking that we've had opportunity to serve and, and minister to. Because this is a perfect example of slavery, human slavery, and anti-trafficking. But look at the fact that might be where God is getting them away so that even in Joseph's situation where God was behind the whole thing and preserving them. And so, Joseph's response, if we can get a hold of this, he says, don't feel badly. He says, uh, don't blame yourselves for selling me. God was behind it. We hope your life has been enriched by today's message. The entire message series can be purchased at Creflo Dollar Ministries eStore. Visit us at store.cdmcanada.ca. Call us toll free at 1-877-556-0668 or if it's more convenient, email us info at cdmcanada.ca.